Republican Senator Tom Cotton sits on the Senate Judiciary Committee. The senator also a member of the Armed Services and Intelligence Committees. And focus now, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's start with these threats. And, you know, we heard the press secretary say, well, we, we've only been looking in one direction. What exactly was she talking about? Do you know? No, Harris, I don't have any clue what she was talking about. That's pretty typical for her these days. Uh, but what we do know is that after that opinion was leaked a couple weeks ago, you had pro-abortion protesters outside the homes of Supreme Court justices in direct violation of federal law. Yet where was Merrick Garland? Where was federal law enforcement? Why were they not arrested? If the Department of Justice will excuse and look the other way, obvious, blatant violations of federal law, then they only encourage more law-breaking. That's why all the laws must be enforced, and they must be enforced even-handedly, without regard to political party or political viewpoint. You know what? I, I'm just going to call it plain, just like you do, Senator. Um, these are conservative justices who have people popping up on their personal property, a danger to them potentially and their families, and as you said, against federal law. I can cite the code, I do it every day. We'll skip that for now, though. Can we just call it all extreme? Why, why does the Justice Department only, or DHS, only get involved when the extremists that they identify, and of course we know they're making it about race, aren't they? Or something. Well, Harry, I think they're making it fundamentally about ideology, and they refuse to enforce the law or condemn their ideological kindred spirits. You saw this with the BLM rights in the summer of 2020. They excused and sometimes even marched with these rioters and looters and arsonists. They refused to bring charges uh, against so many people who were destroying federal property in Portland. They refused to defend the federal marshals who were being sued by left-wing activist groups who defended that very courthouse in Portland. Yet when concerned moms show up at school boards to voice their concerns about curriculum, then they sick the feds on them. Again, this is a, a disturbing pattern of how the uh, Biden administration is weaponizing law enforcement and even our national security departments and agencies like the Department of Homeland Security and the now defunct disinformation board to try to chill the speech and political activities mm. of its ideological opponents. And then they had to put the chill on themselves by pausing that disinformation governance board because the person leading it was, well, Spewing disinformation, that's what she does. All right, in fact, let's touch on it. That board, again, put on pause, and its director, Nina Jankowitz, has called it quits after just three weeks. This follows a wave of criticism, mostly from conservatives. Two top House Republicans on national security, John Katko and Mike Turner, say it's the best decision that's been made when it comes to this Orwellian entity. Senator Josh Hawley, tweeted this, don't pause the disinformation board, end it forever. Fox's Peter Ducey noted the irony of the suspension after the administration had blamed its demise on mischaracterization, mischaracterization of its purpose. Watch. The board will not convene during that period, but the departments work across several administrations uh, to address disinformation that threatens uh, the security for our, our country is critical and will continue. So if it's pausing because you think the board was mischaracterized, then the disinformation board is being shut down because of disinformation? Is that what's happening here? Wow. Simple yes would be appropriate, but she looked at her binder. <laughs> Critics are hailing the apparent end of the board. The Wall Street Journal editorial board says the disinformation governance board disavowed. And this from the New York Post. Good riddance to the Ministry of Truth and Nina Jankowitz. Senator Cotton, your thoughts. Well, I'm glad that they paused this Ministry of Truth, but they really do need to end it. And Congress should act to make sure that not only does the Department of Homeland Security not resurrect something like it, hmm. but that no part of the federal government tries to create such a Ministry of Truth to label or censor speech. It's very curious, isn't it, Harris, how they can never quite explain what they mean by disinformation, but they assure us that it's not the speech of conservatives or conservative media outlets. Yet this woman who was in charge of it, she labels disinformation things like 
the Hunter Biden laptop story in the New York Post a couple years ago, which now even the New York Times and CNN acknowledge are truthful information. The government should not be in the business of censoring speech or even labeling speech. If you don't like someone's speech, the answer to it is more speech. The government does not have a role in refereeing political debates in the public square. Senator Cotton, so true. President Biden has invoked the Defense Production Act finally to boost production of baby formula. You know, once it was an emergency. He also has authorized military planes to fly in supplies from overseas. All of this is good news. Well into a crisis, all of it will take some time. Parents, Republicans, even some Democrats say Biden should have done this so long ago, weeks ago, if not months ago. Even the Washington Post editorial board hit the administration. It's hard to imagine, the Post said. The United States would be in a situation where the most basic of foodstuff is not available for babies. But that's exactly where we are in 2022. The baby formula shortage is a national emergency, and the White House and congressional leaders should have been prepared for it months ago. The Surgeon General setting some tough questions now or getting them from the liberal media. We'll watch together. Did the White House and did the government take too long to act? Well, Mika, the FDA began acting as soon as they knew that the plant was going to shut down. They were already taking action several months ago. I'm not feeling an intensity, not in a matter of weeks, but when are we going to see formula in the mouths of babies in America without any stress in terms of getting it? Let me assure you that every conversation I've had with people at the FDA in the White House has reflected the intensity you're talking about. Because again, this is not just a policy issue. This is personal uh, for many people. Wow. When you lose MSNBC, Senator? Yeah, the, the formula shortage is rank reprehensible incompetence by the Biden administration. They should have taken these steps months ago. The steps they're taking now won't have major effect for months to come. The FDA should have gotten off its duff long ago and authorized that plant in Michigan to reopen. There are other steps it could be taking, yet it still continues to drown any solution in bureaucratic red tape. Steps like importing formula from Canada. The FDA at root is mm. one of the main reasons why we have this formula shortage. Just contra contrast it to the FDA under the Trump administration. We produced a vaccine in less than a year, vaccines that normally yes. take years, if not decades, that we would not have done, obviously, if Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden had been president when that pandemic started. But now the FDA and the bureaucracy is back to its old ways. Not only are they not creating breakthrough new medicines, they are creating an artificial shortage of baby formula for America's children and parents. Well, and I would imagine you start taking it off of shelves in other countries and you're going to have to do a deal that says you're going to put some back. We know how that works because you can't cause shortages elsewhere because of your bad planning. I'm saying this directly to the White House. Any last word from you and we'll move. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure where all these planes are going to fly in Europe. I don't think Europe has massive baby formula stockpiles and depots. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is an artificial shortage created here in America by the Biden administration's incompetence. You know who has some? FEMA. Yeah, seriously, because if there is a, an emergency anywhere in America right now and we lose electricity or we lose the ability to keep the formula in a couple of warehouses that we know exist, um, what do we do? I mean, we, we got to be able to tap it at some, in some way, shape or form. It is fascinating. We can't even save ourselves. It sounds very familiar. It sounds like gas, Aline. Senator Cotton, thank you for being in focus. Thank you, Harris.